The mid-range CPU market has largely been unchallenged for the last few years, with Intel cleaning up most of the market share with their i5 lineup. However, a challenger appears. AMD, from the ashes, released their Ryzen 5 CPUs just last week, and it may just be their best CPU offering yet. With multi-threading support, a stock cooler that doesn't suck, decent clock speeds, and overclocking straight out of the box, the hype for these processors has been on a new level. But is it enough to take down the i5 in gaming, rendering, and encoding? Well, today we're going to put Intel's popular i5-7500 against Ryzen's R5-1400 in a few popular applications, benchmarks, and of course, games. Firstly, let's take a look at how the two CPUs match up spec-wise. Today, you can pick up the i5-7500 for $199 and the i5-1400 for $30 cheaper at $169. Both are quad-core processors, however the Ryzen chip features simultaneous multi-threading, allowing it to handle double the instructions at any given time. This is especially useful for rendering and encoding applications, as we'll see later. The i5 has 25% less memory cache, however, than the R5 at 6MB, and both chips come with stock coolers. Out of the box, Intel's i5-7500 has a base clock of 3.4GHz and a boost clock of 3.8GHz. AMD's R5-1400 is clocked significantly lower out of the box with a base clock of 3.2GHz and a boost clock of 3.4GHz. But one thing the Ryzen chip has up its sleeve is overclocking. If you saw my previous video, you'll know that I was able to achieve a stable overclock of 4.05GHz here which pushes it beyond the i5-7500's 3.8GHz. However, this doesn't necessarily mean better single-threaded performance due to differences in processor architecture and instructions per clock. So, before we get into the results, let's quickly take a look at the test systems. Both systems were running 16GB of 2666MHz RAM, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, a 450W gold red power supply, and a GTX 1070 Founders Edition. The differences were the AMD R5-1400 processor running on the MSI B350 PC Mate motherboard, and the Intel i5-7500 running on the EVGA Z170 Stinger motherboard. So let's kick off the results with a look at rendering in Cinebench R15. The R5-1400 at stock scores 695, while the i5-7500 scores 623. But when the Ryzen chip is overclocked, we saw the score boost all the way up to 852, which is a monstrous jump in performance. When we limit the test to only use a single thread, the i5 chip reclaims the lead, despite being clocked a little slower than the overclocked Ryzen chip. Now, let's take a look at encoding, starting off with 7-zip's built-in benchmark. Here, the i5-7500 scored 16707, with the stock AMD edging out ahead, with 17654. This again extends significantly once overclocked scoring 21,047. But how about a practical encoding benchmark, something that you guys, the viewers, are more likely to find useful. In Adobe Media Encoder, a 10 minute shadow play movie of recorded Battlefield 1 gameplay was encoded in H.264 across both processors. The stock Ryzen 1400 completes the task in 10 minutes and 12 seconds, with the Intel chip not too far behind at 10 minutes and 43 seconds. And to no surprise to you guys by this point, the overclocked Ryzen chip improves its own time significantly by 51 seconds. Now, how about gaming? Well, all testing was done at 1080p, and in all tests, I did favor a more CPU-bound experience. Remember, we're not really looking at the absolute numbers here. Rather, we're looking at the difference between the Intel chip and the AMD chip. The point of CPU testing is to get as close to 100% CPU usage as possible, and to do this, I've lowered the quality settings. So let's start off with Doom running the Vulkan API at high settings. Here, the Ryzen processor is pushing an average of 140 FPS at stock and 146 FPS once overclocked, with the i5-7500 at 138. For the most part, the difference here is not noticeable, but the extra threads on the R5-1400 help keep those demanding CPU moments in check, with its bottom 0.1% of frame rates significantly ahead of the Intel processor, resulting in less micro stuttering. Moving on to Battlefield 1 multiplayer, and here the testing methodology was a full conquest round which usually lasts around 25 minutes. Here you're looking at the Intel i5-7500, and as you can see, we're sitting at 100% CPU usage, meaning all four threads are fully utilized. Switching to the Ryzen processor and usage was definitely a lot lower, but so was average FPS. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and I triple checked my settings and even re-ran the tests. Once overclocked, we get a much better playing experience, and this is where the Ryzen processor catches up. 
Let's look at the numbers. For average FPS, we have the i5 7500 sitting at 109, the stock R5 1400 at 96, and the overclocked R5 1400 at 109. Bottom 0.1% of frame rates was also ahead for the overclocked Ryzen chip, and although it's only by 8%, there was a noticeable improvement in micro stuttering. Moving on to Witcher 3, a primarily GPU bound game, which is quite hard to test for CPU differences. Usually I'd start my benchmark at the bridge in this area of the map, but passing through this AI dense area here definitely helps shift more load onto the CPU and expose some differences. Here, both processors were utilized upwards of 100% near this AI dense area of the benchmark, and for the most part, the Intel processor handled it quite well. But the Ryzen chip was stuttering whenever it was utilized at 100%. Watch the benchmark closely to see what I mean. Overclocking the Ryzen chip does not show much improvement at all, and this could even be margin of error. And yes, I reran the tests after seeing this, double checked my RAM speeds, and I reconfirmed these results. Although both processors had an average FPS of 75, the Intel chip certainly wins here, with a tighter bound between its average, bottom 1%, and bottom 0.1% of frame rates. Lastly, we have Far Cry Primal using their built-in benchmark at normal settings. Here we have the stock R5 1400, pushing an average of 89 FPS, and once overclock, extends that up to 95. However, it's not enough to catch the Intel chip at 110. So, what do we make of all this? Well, it's no doubt that the Ryzen 5 1400 is the clear winner when it comes to rendering and encoding, with a noticeable improvement in handling those multi-threaded workloads. In gaming, the results were a little all over the place, and I'm not sure what to make of this. In Battlefield 1, the Ryzen chip edges ahead of the Intel chip once it was overclocked, and in Doom, we see a similar story. However, the micro stuttering in Witcher 3 and lowly performance in Far Cry Primal may be concerning for some. And I know I can already hear some of the voices saying I should have tested with 3200 MHz RAM or above, but let's be realistic because chances are, if you're going to buy this processor, you're not going to also be spending a chunk of your budget on RAM that is clocked that fast. 2666 MHz seems more realistic and that's what I've used in the test, which brings me to my next point. Getting the B350 motherboard to cooperate with 2666 MHz RAM was definitely a bit of a headache. Whenever I would overclock the processor through the Ryzen master software, it would restart the system and reset the RAM speeds to 2133 MHz. I eventually got it to work by dialing in manual RAM timings in the BIOS, but good luck with anything above 2666 MHz at this point in time. So the golden question, if I had $200 to buy a new CPU tomorrow, which one would I pick? Well, for me, the Ryzen R5 1400 chip fits perfectly. Seeing as I do a ton of video compression and editing work, and I also happen to play a lot of Battlefield 1, which the Ryzen chip showed great scaling in. For those out there who are only concerned about gaming performance, no editing, no video encoding, and no CPU rendering, both processors are good options. But at this point in time, the Intel chip is the safer one. No RAM speed issues, no optimization issues, with great single-threaded performance, which, as we've seen, is very important for gaming. If you don't mind waiting for some BIOS updates and driver optimization to release over the next few months, and you tend to play heavily multi-threaded games, then the Ryzen chip becomes a good choice. Keep in mind the R5 1400 is also $30 cheaper. Now, I know a lot of you are wondering why I didn't test the R5 1500X, the $189 Ryzen 5 processor, which is clocked higher out of the box and has double the memory cache of the R5 1400 and also comes with a bigger cooler. Well, I really had no idea that the R5 1400 would overclock over 4 gigahertz, but when it did, I thought it would be an interesting comparison to the i5-7500. Let me know what you guys think of this new processor from AMD. I really hope that optimization starts to roll out in the coming months. I definitely want to see these motherboard and RAM compatibility issues become solved as soon as possible. For now, it's just great to see some competition in the CPU market, and I'll leave you guys with that. Don't forget to subscribe for similar content in the future, and I'll see you guys in the next video.